On this segment of the show, we'll be engaging the uh, issues surrounding the oil sector, particularly the uh, stories that have been trending in the last couple of years, couple of months, couple of weeks, which bothers on crude oil theft. Nigerian Transparency uh, Initiative, NATI, has uh, given insight into how much of crude oil has been stolen uh, between, I mean, that's up to 2020, 2022 or thereabout, over 600 million barrels worth about um, 16.5 trillion era. Uh, that's about uh, 46.65 billion dollars stolen uh, within the Nigerian oil industry. And one man who has been at the forefront um, bringing forth all of these revelations just to help us make sense of it and also uh, help the authorities in charge to take action in order to stem the ugly tide has been a former member of the House of Representatives. Uh, he represented Ego Bobaka Federal Constituency in the House of Representatives. He was also the Nigeria uh, National Assembly U.S. Congress uh, subcommittee chairman at the time, but is now the national commissioner in the uh, ICPC in Abuja. I'm talking about no other person than Honorable Eyozua Johnson Agboaima, who is joining us live from Abuja uh, Network Studio. Honorable Johnson Eyozua Johnson Agboaima, popularly called EJ. Honorable EJ, it's good to have you join us on TMI. How are you doing today? Thank you very much, uh, Pastor Sonny Duke. Uh, thank you to our viewers. Good morning to everyone out there in those state. Uh, for correction, let me correct that I'm not with the ICPC. I'm a federal commissioner. Code of Conduct Bureau. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable uh, EJ, for that correction. But let's just go straight to the point. Uh, the issue of crude oil theft has been on for such a long time. Uh, but you took that initiative to make some uh, revelations in recent times. Uh, that seems to have uh, triggered a lot of uh, issues in that sector. Uh, there's also an allegation you know, surrounding the um, MD and the CEO of the Nigerian Petroleum Corporation Limited over a certain 20 billion era, which also is just their candidate for. I mean, so many of such instances have been there. But let's start from the basis. Give us insight into what informed your decision to go out and uh, make this uh, investigation. What are your findings, and how is government responding to it? Well, thank you, uh, Mr. Okusu, and uh, again, uh, it's a privilege to be on the ITV platform once again. Uh, congratulations for all that you have been doing, I uh, try to pass uh, information to the public. Uh, uh, to throw more light uh, to your question, uh, let me say that uh, it didn't just started today, it has been ongoing for so many years. Even before I came back to Nigeria, uh, once upon a time, I was a consultant to the National Assembly as far back as uh, 1999. That was uh, under Senior President Chuba Karibu. I'm a very humble friend and brother, right in the West Idaosa, who happened to have been the chairman of, uh, you know, uh, you know, you know uh, in, at, the, at the House of Rotative, you know, on the petroleum matters. Uh, then uh, I, I worked closely with them. Over the years, uh, for the fact that uh, I was at that time in the oil sector, I had so much uh, interest in uh, what was coming to America because uh, many years has gone and passed. Uh, Nigeria is one of the number one in the world, in the oil producing country, but uh, we have made a show for it. And to the glory of God, and, uh, when I became member of the uh, for the fact that I also have a lot of uh, you know, information that I lobbyist at the time in the United States. Uh, the area of uh, crude oil and uh, some of the deficiency and uh, corruption that has eaten up deeply, we were very much in tune. 
So when I came to the House of Rep, I took it upon myself to go around because information is power, information gathering. Uh, to surprise you, uh, I was able to you know, reach out to some of our leaders. Uh, I cannot forget those who stood by me, who supported this effort. It wasn't just done just by myself alone, uh, but I was able to gather more information from some of our leaders. Uh, somebody like uh, Tom Pulo, who supported me then, who I got a lot of information from, because he is from Niger Data, and we are from Niger Data. But unfortunately, that uh, Niger Data that produces, produces uh, the crude oil for this nation. There's no need to write home about uh, the farm, the fish are not coming that fish, and uh, the infrastructure that they've got the Niger Data are not to write home about. And it was so worrisome that these are the only thing that prepared me to really, you know, move into this area of investigating the oil theft in the Niger Delta. Because we were building the militants, and the real, you know, Bokra were not just only the militants, they were the cabal that were taking the crude oil through the back door to global destination. And at that time, uh, Tompolo approached Mr. President, former President Jonathan, and uh, President Jonathan, in his own wisdom, you know, say that, uh, well, let's look at it. Uh, they wanted to start from 1999 to 1999 to investigate all the crude oil that led this country to global destination. But he said, no, let's, you know, investigate his own tenure. And that was what happened and now approached uh, Desiree. Before then, you know, they had a meeting uh, that involved all the stakeholders, the president, vice president, all the governors of Niger Delta from Niger Delta were present. And they all alluded and agreed to take action on this. And uh, Mr. President, then, you know, at least uh, also, you know, put the information to and uh, brought to uh, the former minister of Petroleum for State, Diziani, who also was opposed to it. But Topolo stood his ground. And at the end of the day, uh, the government now decided to engage Monocular Power System, Nigeria Limited, who now decided to engage a fairy firm called Nemo's out of Houston, Texas, to undertake the mapping system of, uh, you know, try to see, to conduct a forensic audit of all the, you know, ship, the shipment that led the shore, the, the shore of Nigeria to go to global destination. And to surprise you, uh, that we amaze you, is that a lot of these undeclared could have led this country. To the United States alone, it was 391 million barrels to Port of Houston and Port of Le Charles. And this amounts up to about $17 billion, over $17 billion. Up to the last half, 2011, 12, 13, 14. Those were the area that, you know, that was investigated. And the country that Mr. President wanted to investigate was 51 countries. But the consultant, the molecular power system, were able to conduct 41 country completed. And that information is not bubbling. I'm talking about the, the vessel member, the IMO, the off-taker, the off-take owner, the country, you know, off-take, the country owner, and the production. I'm talking about the figure of buyers that landed in all these uh, countries. And to surprise you that one member in America alone was over 391 million buyers. And that alone, alone is enough to solve Nigeria's problem. That's why I often say that Nigeria, Nigeria is not broke. We are rich. God has blessed this country with enormous in opportunity, natural resources, mineral resources, even capital. We have it, but we have been our worst enemy. But it's very sickening. What shall we profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? And uh, when you die, we all came to this world naked, and when you die, we are going back naked. To the detriment of all Nigeria today, we don't have good roads, we don't have good educational system, the you know, look at the, the transportation system is instead of commandos, the healthcare system is nowhere, the federal rules are not going, nothing is working as a result because somebody has been really made a progress on moving this country to the next level because they have stolen your resources yesterday and nothing can be done today. So that is why I made the motion. And our mission was called urgently to investigate the undeclared crude oil that led Nigeria to global destination. Those, you know, 
I, I, let me just say this. It's just too unfortunate that uh, I did call upon. You know, sometimes I just wanted to throw more light when the ITV invited me because I'm from a I don't want to say no. Uh, it comes to a point that I'm tired of talking about this issue. Far back 2016, when I moved this motion, the National Assembly called me last week and said, Why? After almost seven years, nothing done. Even though the government took it upon itself to sue those companies, but unfortunately, some of the men are engaged by Nigeria so that we can get our money back, connect with the multinational company and some of the local cotton companies to the really will of progress or moving forward. So it's a pathetic, this it's annoying to see that. We are our worst enemy. I, I will stop here at the moment. You know, if you have another question, I throw more light to it. Some of the questions that I have for you. Um, talk to us about, you, you just talk, talk to us about the findings, which is already there in the public space. Are you bothered by the fact that there seems to be a very lethargic response by the government to all of these findings in terms of bringing uh, the perpetrators to book. You are a federal commissioner at the Code of Conduct Bureau. Uh, it's it's uh, an agency of government also saddled the responsibilities of bringing people who are found wanting and uh, issues of this nature to book. Are you brother that, you know, in spite of all of this information being there, uh, nobody really has been brought to book you know, to, to, to account for all of these infractions that we have. Yeah, there, there's a report by um, NATI. Uh, we mentioned that earlier. Maybe we could just take it down a little bit. We'll see that um, those figures that are there in the public space, um, you know, over 16 trillion uh, naira that has been stolen. I mean, what of crude oil that has been stolen? for a reasonable number of years. But with these figures are just there, we're just banning these figures. It looks like government is not interested in bringing the perpetrators to book. What have you got to say about this? Uh, truly, let me say this without fear of favor. It's, it is known that the government is not interested. The government is very much interested because they need the money. Like I said before, when the government decided to engage, some of the lawyer to help. Because the government cannot just start, you know, arresting people without persecution. They have to persecute. Now, when some of the lawyers command the IOC up to now, no result. And at the end of the day, yes, we can blame the government. Maybe blame the federal. All of us are part of the government. That's what I've often said, see the crime be committed refusing to report the scene of that crime to the nearest law enforcement agency, you are as guilty as the man or woman who committed that crime. So we are all part of the government. We won't participate. We won't be part of it. That is one of the reasons why I took it upon myself. Because we can't just be blaming government. When you put a finger at all that, the other four is putting at you. What have you contributed? What have you? Let me also say, what about the governors across the country? They are also benefiting from federal allocation. The more the federal gets, the more the state gets. So everybody must come together individually, you know, governors, ministers, senators, congressmen, just like the National Assembly and our three more life, try to see if they can have a headway. And that is the reason why I say, well, I will try my best to give the best information I have. So uh, I'll tell you the truth. Even Nati, in his own you know, wisdom, at least, what have they, have they done? In order to coach you all this problem, to resolve this problem, it's a collective effort. We have to be patriotic. We have to be patriotic. Ask me what your country can do for you, but what you can individually, collectively do for your country. Because I'm paying that youth are off, they are all out there. Having graduated four, five, six, seven, eight years, school strike, at the end of the day, no employment for them. Then, you, what do you say about all this? So, as we blame the government, we also have to blame ourselves. So, look at the issue now. The lead council 
an American lawyer that will engage to help so that we can get this money back to Nigeria. He came to Nigeria to make sure that, yes, all these are resolved. Guess what? He left Nigeria back to America and said, Congressman EJ, I am not coming back to Nigeria. I said, why? He said, because the Nigerian people, I'm talking about the lawyers, engaged by the federal government, combined to sabotage the effort of winning the case in court. There are so many court cases that the government has engaged, they have done, but no result yet. And okay. where do we go from here? And go back, I've said this over and over again, MFPC, tell us what has happened to our dear nation. It is not public. Look at LPDC right there in the United States. LPDC in the United We also investigated them. DPRO, we had a meeting in Lagos with all the IOCs. It was chaired by the chair. MD, who are going to be a son of a bill? Yes. A son of a bill, he was the MD of share. He was in that meeting. I challenged them. Can this happen elsewhere if it's not only in Nigeria? Okay. Can this atrocity done until Nigeria? This happen elsewhere. You are in Nigeria. Why will you not allow such a thing to be happening in our dear nation? Look at the pollution in the Niger Delta. Look at the Gulf of Mexico. There was oil spillage in the Gulf of Mexico. It took them how many years to clean up the mess. But look at a big Delta, Aquaibo, Bayesa, Cross River, River State. Go there and see what we're talking about oil spillage. The farmer cannot longer farm, the fisherman cannot longer fish to the detriment to who? To all of us. So the problem remains until we realize that Nigeria belongs to all of us. Let me just tell you, LPDC, this is the record from DPR, told us, LPDC is the old federal government, $4.8 billion that they refuse to remit to government. And we ask them, where is the money? They say they have had agreement with DPR. Where is the agreement? They put the agreement to us. And I read the agreement. I said, no. They have agreed to be paid $10 million back to the Federation account. $10 million every month. Where are you going to be getting this $10 million that will be paying back to the federal government? What happened to the $4.8 billion? I know government is continuous. This wasn't done during your time. I think of the MD now. I said, you are the MD. Government is continuous. Who are going to respond for this shortfall of $4.8 billion? Not now that billions of dollars yeah. went to us that money that we have done a lot for our youth, our Nigerian people. They are telling us that the money has been used by some. When you came to my office at the time, you were telling me to be careful because my family and myself, my life is more important. I told him I don't believe in threats. This is something that is very important. I am going to follow to the latter, and I wish I did. Now, if they used to call my mother of blessed memory, when my mother would call me and start crying that I should leave this matter alone, my senior sister in the UK would call her and be crying that I should leave this investigation. Because this is pain and this is sad. Yes, I lived in America before. American build America. It will take Nigerians to build Nigeria. If they are expecting foreigners to go and build our country for us, we are lying. Okay, uh, on, 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 the, uh, on uh, in a sense, um, you, you, you give us the impression that it's a hopeless case. I may just take a look at uh, between 2009 and 2018 alone, the country lost about 4.2 uh, billion barrels of petroleum products from uh, refineries, and this is valued at 1.84 billion dollars and uh, if we can go as far as far back as um, i can remember this has been a recurring decimal in the sense that every year and every year year in year out we have issues about missing money i mean during the jonathan uh, era there was a certain 20 billion dollars which the then cbn governor 
Sanusi Lamido Sanusi, brought into the public space. Till today, nobody knows the whereabout of that money. All right? And um, we, we, we also had, you know, not too long ago, there's another case surrounding the present MD of NNPC. And then uh, we've been told that the country spent over 13 trillion naira. That's about $74 billion on fuel subsidies between 2005 and 2021. The list is endless. And this figure, in a sense, is in relative terms, is equivalent to Nigeria's entire budget for health, uh, education, agriculture, and defense in the last five years, and almost the capital expenditure for 10 years between 2011 and 2020. How many you know, instances can we cite? Government is uh, hopeless in dealing with this issue. Is that the point that we're making here on the BOEJ? I, 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 I would not agree with you that government is, uh, is hopeless on this issue. They are trying, I, I, at least I've uh, spoken, I've had several meetings with the Attorney General of the Federation. They have done well. But when you have those cabal try to derail the wheel of progress, it is difficult. And that's why I said we are our own worst enemy. Government is trying in their own efforts, but there are some group of people, bigger, they believe they are bigger than government. They are untouchable. I'm sorry. That's why I said that some of these people need to be taught a lesson, apprehended, and be prosecuted. Nobody so who is, who is supposed to, me, who is supposed to do me, that? Who is supposed to do that? Who is supposed to do that? Let me just give That's you, what I'm let, saying that it appears let, let give you, the government is helpless because you, you tacitly said that these couple helpless. of people, just they are you, bigger God, than the on, government. So when you I have mean, a set of people that are bigger than the I, government, that's a, it's a hopeless situation. It means that nothing can be done to remedy the me, situation. Yes, let me tell you now. The government did their best to persecute to charge this matter to court. That's the first thing. And the same Nigeria, we Nigerians, they are not foreigners. Apart from Anthony, the lawyer from America, who is an American, others are Nigerians. If the American man is telling us the only way we can have a headway is to take the litigation to the United States from most of these companies, are based, they have offices in America. That is the only way we will have answer. So if, for instance, the government have taken the matter to court, that is what the government is supposed to do. They have done that. And at the end of the day, from 2016 to present, no results so far. That's what I'm saying. It is a scam, it's a blackmail that we are working against ourselves. Let me just show you something now that will surprise and shock you that I've also given to others. Let me tell you, NAPC declaration, this is their own declaration, as far back 2011 to 2014. I want to show you what they declared. In 2011, they declared total barriers 301 million. 770,059 barriers. 301 million. 2011. With average price of $111.90. Now, expected receipt of dollar was $33 billion. $33 billion. $768 million. 69,602. That is billions. 2011. Now, let me take you to 2012. NFC declared in their own declaration 296 million, 480,785 barrels with average price $112.01. Expected receipt, dollar Nigeria supposed to expect to have received was $33 billion, $208,812,000, 
727. That's 2012. Let's go to 2013. NAPC, in their own declaration, 267 million, 120,559 barrels, with average price of $110.12. Now, how much receipted for? Expected receipt, $29 billion, $29 billion, $415 million, $315,957. Billions of dollars. Now, let's go finally to 2014. This is the area where I investigated. Okay. 2011 to 2014. Now, 2014, buyers declared by NPC, 270 million, 717,119 buyers with average price of $101.91 cent. Expected money, dollar receipted, 27 billion, 27 billion dollars, 588. Now, that's 588 million, 985,417 billions. Now, look at the total virus from 2011 to 2014. The total figure 1 billion, 136 million, 90,522 With expected amount of dollars due to Nigerian. People, Nigerian government, which include all of us, $123 billion, $981,183,703 billion. Okay. This, is the, this is the shocker that is shameful. CBA confirmation, what CBA said they received. On behalf of the government, from 2011 to 2014, 2011, CBN said they received $14 out of $33 billion, 2011. 2012, they received $10 out of $33 billion, 2012. 2013, they received $8 billion plus out of $29 billion. 2014, they received $9 billion, precisely, nine billion eight hundred ten million five hundred fifty one thousand nine hundred forty six dollars Total receipted, received by CBN was $42,749,912,000. Billions of dollars. Now, if you subtract, 42 billion out of 123 billion, the balance is 81 billion dollars, 231 million, 271,293 dollars. So, so, billion. so, where's the money? Where, where's the money? Where's the money? That's the question that needs millions <laughs> of answers. Okay, thank you, thank you very much, uh, Honorable uh, Hiozua Johnson Agwayima, also known as. On EJ, Federal Commissioner with uh, the Code of Conduct Bureau. But my colleague uh, in Abuja is also standing by uh, to take the last shot on this segment before we call it a wrap. Yeah. Okay, so um, uh, starting revelations uh, from that engagement with uh, Honorable Yozua Johnson Agboaima, giving us, I mean, statistics within um, a four year period or thereabout, yeah, 2011, 2013, 2012, 2013, 2014, we can see uh, the staggering figures that have been stolen uh, from the country by those who have uh, literally held this country uh, to the ground. 
uh, but we have on good authority that one of the major fallout is the oil swap deal, uh, which started when the Nigerian National Petroleum Company, NNPC Limited, used to receive a daily crude oil allocation of 445,000 barrels per day from the government to refine for domestic consumption. However, NNPC exported most of the crude and then demanded, uh, depending on the pipeline products marketing uh, company or private oil marketers to import refined products. But let's uh, link up now with uh, Joseph Kadri to take the last shot on the segment of the discussion, and that brings us to a close on TMI today. Joseph, yeah. yeah. All right, uh, Mr. Duke, uh, it's just to say um, we actually would say that we have spice of the day of um, most of Nigerians, especially uh, with some of the topics that we looked at today. Uh, the last one is a very interesting one. I'm sure that in the coming days, we shall be having revelation on how yeah. uh, these monies we are cutted away and where the monies are. And I'll say thank you so much to Nigerians for spending their time uh, with us on the program this morning on ITV. Thank you, uh, Joseph Kadri. Uh, that's our package for today on uh, TMI on ITV Network. We hope you had a great time with us. Uh, we hope to have Onbo E.J. Aguayuma again, uh, not too far away, to engage these issues. And you can rest assured that the revelations will be really, 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 um, you know, so revealing. But I want to thank everyone that made the program a huge success. Have a great day ahead. Bye for now.